Hello, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Feelers. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the new procedural texture in Affinity Photo 1.7. So let's get started. So I have three pictures here. One, I did a texture of um, text here. I added fur to this one, and I added some special burn bump lightning to this one. And it's all done with procedural texture. So let's see how it works. Let's start with the camouflage. So what I did here was I just went into urban camouflage, but I'm going to show you how to do this from the start. So let's delete this. And I gave this, I had a texture right here. And I actually gave it an effect that we don't need it, but I gave it a 3D and a bevel and emboss. So if you didn't see that, here's regular text. And then I went to 3D and I gave it a little bit of a radius and I added a little bevel and emboss with a little bit of a radius, just like that. So any text will do or any, any shape, anything will do. So to get to the procedural texture, you go up to layer, make sure you have your layer selected first of all, and then you go to layer, new live filter, colors, procedural texture. And so the first one I thought would be fun was camouflage. So I went here and I searched down the line and it is urban camouflage. And what it does is it just gives you all this texture like this and it's always in black and white it seems. So I'm just learning this as we go along too. And you can change the turbulence for example as I move this. The texture changes somewhat. So you can pick what you think is good, and, and even the square count means how many, how many, like it's getting larger now as opposed to smaller because they're adding more repeats on this with random repeats, I mean. So let's do it that way. And from here, since I wanted the color to show through, I just went to overlay. I, maybe I didn't. No, here we go. So there's overlay. And I'm done there. Now remember, I'm working on this one. So now, even if I'm on overlay, I could change the color of any to anything I want. So it takes a little bit <clears throat> because I'm sure there's a lot of math involved in this procedural thing. So... So that's how I got to the camouflage. So let's hide that. Now let's get to the next one, which is this. And what I did there, I'm going to just open it to double check. It's called Perlin Noise. So let's do that from scratch. I'm going to delete that. And this was my original text with my, overlay, with my uh, effects on it. Make sure it's selected. You go to Layer. New Live Filter Layer, Colors, and Procedural Texture. And now you go into the preset, and you go all the way down to where it says Perlin Noise, right here. And once again, you can control different things on the Perlin Noise. It actually has a little bit of a marble effect here, but you can, um, say you lower it. It gets blurrier there, or as you go higher up, it gets sharper. So you decide where you want it to be. Also, there's a more of a contrast as you go up or down. And then once again, if you want to keep the color, you can do all different. You can make it really dark with multiply, which is a very cool effect. Color burn. I like some of these effects. They're really cool. And... I'm not saying this is a perfect situation. So once again, I'll leave it on. Maybe soft light. Let's see. Soft light has a nice smooth effect, but I'll leave it on overlay again. And also, remember, you can also go to that texture. And if you want to tone it down even more, you can do that. So you can put more or less. And the one I had the most trouble with is this one. It's called Marble. And you, you could see here, you won't even see a preset because how I had to play with it. 
But let me just show you what the problem was with marble. So let me delete this. And that's the same texture we had before. Make sure it's selected. You go to Layer, <clears throat> New Live Filter Layer, Colors, Procedural Texture. Now when you go to Marble, let me find it. There we go. That's fine, except there's no, there's nothing I can do to it. Like there's no sliders or anything. And they have equations here, and I, and I have I'm going to try slowly, and I'm sure others will, to um, decode these equations. Because right now there's only this little marble effect on one side, and I don't like that. But what I did, I was playing around with some of these effects. Like it goes all the way to here. So I did notice that I think the first one says divided by 150. And if I lower that number, so let's say instead of 150, I say 75 and see what that looks like. I got more, more texture in different areas. In fact, I can even lower it more if I could say 50. And that gave me a different kind of texture. Also, I looked at some of these near the end and some of them have to do with smoothness. Again, I'm not 100% sure. This, this says something about smooth steps. So I, only, I just played around like this is a 0.5. So instead of 0.5, I said 0.9. Whoops, I did two points there. So let me say 0.9. And I did that and it changed it a little. Gave me more of the white and a little bit of a smoother texture with the white. So you really have to play around with it. We're all learning this from scratch. It's not giving us, someone should be able to give us what these formulas do and how they work. Um, I mean, I just kept playing around. I don't know what I was doing, but you know, part of the creative process is you should play around with everything and not always use it the way it's intended. So here's a 0 0.6. I have no idea what it's going to do. So let me say that's a 0.2 instead. And we look and it's very smooth now. And I don't think I like that. So let me go back to that 0.2. Instead of 0.2, maybe I'll change it to 0.9. See what happens there. And it gives me a different kind of texture. And once again, you could, that uh, marble gives you color with their texture. I don't know why, but you can always use the multiply overlay to keep your own texture in place. So that's the texture part. So let's go to something else now. Um, I found this interesting. This is a very bad photo that I had taken, and it's very washed out. I did no work on it. This was just the original photo itself, and I wanted to try something with this textural thing, and I found that something called uh, bump lighting works really well. So let's try it from scratch. So there's the, there's the photo. Make sure the layer is selected. We go to Layer, um, New Live Filter layer, layer, excuse me, colors and procedural texture and then I hit the preset and went to bump map simple bump map lighting negated why I don't know what that means but I played with it so and this is what I saw but I change it to overlay and it became very dark so um, so I moved the lighting and what it was doing is it's giving me light by a, by a bump map actually. So it doesn't look great there. So then I did that and then I grabbed it and I lowered the opacity just a little bit. And I thought that was pretty nice. I mean, there's a lot more work that needs to be done on it and you could change where the lighting comes from. But look at the difference between that and that and that simple step. So that was one. That was another one I used with procedural texture. So that, the last one I did was, and I don't like the fur to be honest with you, but I just took this bear, simple bear. So let's show you how I did that. I'm going to delete these actually. So what I did is I made sure I rasterized the bear, and then I grabbed my flood selection tool and selected certain areas. And I didn't want to select them all at the same time. I'm going to click Add to make this faster, but 
Let's see, one, two, and three maybe for now. I did Control or Command J and Control or Command D to deselect. So now this is what I have. So if I went on that layer and selected it and I went to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Colors, Procedural Texture, and I look for fur. I thought I'd want to do fur, but the fur is pretty bad here. I mean, so you can change the turbulence, like just different sizes of turbulence, and you can make it sm um, less square counts or more, which means it'll be smaller. I didn't see much of anything great here. Here's the Z, I don't know. Once again, I played. I didn't use any of these formulas. I'm just playing with these things right now. And I hated it. But what I ended up doing was normal. I think I did overlay again. Or soft light, maybe. I don't even remember. Let's try overlay first. And I still hated it. So then I went into the texture. And I hit the blend ranges and try to get rid of some of the white that was in the texture itself so that I can have more of the colors showing through like this. I mean, I can go this way higher or lower. I still don't like it, to be honest with you, but it's better than what it was. So that's, where I, that's what I did to get that texture. And the reason I, I did separate things is, let's hide that again. Um, so I had done the, the head and the feet, and I thought, like, I don't want to do the same thing because it looks the same. So I grabbed the body and separately made sure I hit add again and say that that. And then I did control or command J again. And then on the body, I did, let's leave that one open. So on the body, now I did again, I did layer, new live filter, color, procedural texture. Well, let me deselect first. There we go. And again, I did fur, which I don't like at all. And maybe I'm using fur wrong, but fur does not look like fur to me. And overlay, I guess. There we go. But this time, see now, if you use it differently, like maybe this one should be longer, so it looks like the body. You don't want them to all look the same. So what I did here is I just did that. And again, if you want, you can, there's more white in here. I didn't want the white. So which one am I on now? I don't even know. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm on this one. Okay. So I didn't like the white. So I went into the blend if and got rid of the white so that more of the brown color from the bear shows through. So that's it. It's still a learning process and I will be showing more, but I think some of this is a great start at getting the textures, especially, I love this. And it's not just for text. I mean, you can use it for anything. Uh, I really love the way these some of these textures work. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'll be doing more of some 1.7 tutorials and have a good day.